G'day viewers, Jodocast again. Uh, this is just a quick review video on this product which uh, I bought through Lighttake. Now, uh, NF Strike and their sister company Lighttake uh, do send me products uh, free of charge for the purpose of review, etc. This, however, was something that I purchased myself. Um, I saw it on their site when I was looking for some other products and just had to have it. So I have a couple of gel ball shooters and uh, this was is actually designed for that gel ball market but uh, I had the suspicion that I would be able to actually adapt it to use for nerf purposes and we're going to test that today. Some of you will have seen a little teaser video that I did uh, using Stefan's uh, and it does work you can fit a small number of Stefan's in there but today we're going to have a look at using rival balls as the actual ammunition in this one. Now, uh, without any further ado, what this actually is, some of you may have suspected, is a Claymore anti-personnel mine. What you get in the kit is you get a clacker remote. That's the term that they were actually given as a clacker. So. Uh, on, the, on the real ones, you get a charger, a USB charger for your battery. Uh, you get your battery itself. The mine, well actually, first of all there's a handle for running your trip wire. The mine itself. Let me get it out of here. And then underneath your packaging here you've got a reel of trip line and an instruction manual. Alright, let's get this going. Now first things first, you need to put your battery into your mine here. So on the back here there's a battery door, we just need to undo this screw. So once you've got your uh, screw undone, you can just open up your little battery door and there's your wire there with a the connector battery will plug in, it only goes in one way, there's a little clip. Alright, so you plug that together. Back in. Okay. And then you've got your clacker remote which has uh, takes two AA batteries, so we'll pop those in as well. All right. Okay, I'll pop the charger aside. Now, we'll use it um, uh, with the remote for now, but what happens with the uh, the line is the line will attach to the handle like such. Goes on through here, clips on, then you run your line up through your little guide eyelet there. And that's for running your line to wherever you wish to run it. Now, essentially, the line will attach to this little tab here. As that pulls forward, it will release the mine. Now, um, this is a little safety locking tab at the front here. So what you do is you twist that and remove it. And that then unlocks the front door so that, uh, so that the mine can be uh, tripped. Now, with that in place, uh, you, you can't actually trip the mine at all. So... So, um, good idea to leave that in when you're not planning on actually setting the mine. Um, now, for gel ball use, there's that little front door that slides up and it gives you this little ramp and entry point in which you can pour your gel balls and they'll actually fill the, um, the little diaphragm in front, in the inside, that actually flings the balls. But um, as we're going to use rifle rounds, I'll show you uh, what we need to do here. So, what we need to do is basically open the mine. Now inside it there's two spring-loaded uh, doors that close over and then as the front opens they flick out 
expanding out like a diaphragm, which is essentially a piece of material, uh, which then flings the balls out forward. Um, so this thing's spring-loaded under pressure, the door, so you need to be very careful when opening it. Um, you need to kind of use two hands. So what I'm going to do is try and set up the camera and um, and show you how to actually open it uh, without <laughs> without triggering it, so to speak. Uh, hang on one second. Okay, so remove this pin, safety pin, and then holding the door down, pinning it closed, push this little lever forward, and your lateral will pop up. Now, you can slowly start to open the door. You get it open wide enough. You can get a couple of fingers in and hold those flaps that will you can open the door and then release them slowly and so that's essentially the internals of the of the mine so what we're going to do is load it up with some rival rounds so we've got 10 rival balls here um, nine orange aftermarkets and one genuine um, i just put the genuine one in there for a, a contrast um, so what you do is start to collapse the little arms so that it makes almost like a little basket type effect and then we drop our 10 rounds in try and arrange them so that uh, they sort of fill up the whole basket area and don't gather all into one spot So you basically get, when you come in, you'll end up with a row of four down the middle and two rows of three either side. And then you clamp it closed. And while you're holding those down, you close up the lid. Push it down tight. Then push your latch in. And you've set your mine. Now, because we're not using it straight away, make sure you put that safety pin back in to hold the latch down. All right, so now the mine's actually set and loaded. So uh, on the bottom of the mine, you have these couple of legs, which you can rotate around. And now you can open them out uh, into various positions. They sort of have a couple of uh, stiff locking points. So, um, But what I've found is that to have just the, the front slightly elevated is, is more than enough to... Uh, to get your your job uh, your rival rounds to project uh, to you know a sort of standard um, sort of height uh, of the average human being, so so just to have it sit like that is uh, like almost facing ground level is is adequate to get your uh, your uh, rival balls to give you a decent spread over a decent range. So what we'll do is we'll go and set this up now. Um, in the garden and uh, and give you a, a victim's point of view of it being discharged. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is that when, while you've got the door open there's actually a little switch on the side inside this panel here. Um, that's your activation switch for your remote purposes. So that does have to be turned on. Now when that's turned on you get a little red light up here. As you can see that is not on, on mine at the moment because I forgot to flick that switch. Good news is you can actually do it after you've closed the mine. Um, you just need to get a thin device like the screwdriver I was using before, which is right here. And you can actually slip that down the gap and push the switch across. And then you've got your little red light there. So you can see that that's now activated. Right, so the mine is now uh, activated. It's not armed because we haven't removed the safety pin. Let's go put it over in place in the garden and get a test shot. All right, so we've got the mine set up here in the center of the, my little back lawn. Now what we'll do is we'll take a couple of steps back and then we'll uh, get a victim point of view of setting off the mine. Three, two, one.
All right, so uh, I'm approximately about 15 feet back from the uh, from the mine itself. Um, now at that distance, um, I was hit by a couple of the balls. I'm not sure how many. Um, the spread, you've got you've got one here, one there, another one there. Then a couple that went past. You've got one over here. There's that original round over there. Uh, one flew all the way back and bounced off the back door. And there's one over here as well. So uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight over there. Uh, one back here, nine. So yeah, as you can see from distance wise, um, so they've actually gone all the way back to the door here um, and hit the wall, so we're looking at a good 30 feet um, that they've launched um, and spread over an area. Oh look, there's one over there. So they've spread over an area of about 18 feet wide, so an 18 foot wide spread over a 30 foot distance, so yeah, you get a uh, reasonable sort of a spray um, from that sort of a distance, so so this is what the mine looks like once it's actually been detonated, so to speak um, and you can see what your uh, your clacker does, your remote, there's that latch on top and when you click your remote See, it pops the latch. So now that's what I was saying about the trip wire before. So your trip wire attaches to that little ring point at the front, which, as that ring point is pulled forward by your trip wire, again it releases your latch. Now the only thing you would need to do is, if you're using the trip wire, is make sure you anchor the mine properly so that the, when the trip wire is pulled, it doesn't uh, pull the mine out of position. Um, all right. I think that's pretty much it. I, I'm wrapped with the product. I think it's fantastic. Um, I'm more than happy with it because uh, I can use it for multiple applications, um, using it with either gel balls or the uh, or the Nerf uh, purposes. So um, yeah, very happy with the product. Uh, the quality of the build's very good. Um, Functionality is awesome. So yeah, for me, uh, I give it a, a two thumbs up. Um, yeah, that's my official rating. Two thumbs up. Um, yeah, all right. So thanks very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, if you want to get yourself one of these, um, you can pop over to uh, the Like Light Take website, or I believe NF Strike is selling them as well. So go and check them out as well. Um, thanks very much to Light Take and NF Strike for that, as both companies do send me products to review, etc. And I also purchase products from them, uh, obviously, as I purchase this, um, along, you know, with, uh, you know, a couple of hundred dollars worth of other stuff. So, um, yeah, by all means, please go and check out their websites. Um, they have all your Nerf needs, needs covered. Uh, they're now also doing the uh, Orange Mod Works range of products. So th they really are almost like the perfect one-stop shop now. You can get everything you need for your Nerf. Um, Alright, so thanks very much for viewing, um, please like and subscribe and I will see you on the next one, cheers.